Hey guys, Thomas the Solo Jr. here, aka Mustache Chom, here to review Fantastic Beast, The Crimes of Grindelwald, or as I'll refer to him as just Wald, for short. Boy oh boy, was this a long movie. This is a two hour movie that I did not expect. Um, Fantastic Beast, for those of you who don't know, is like the sort of prequel, I think. I think it's a prequel to Harry Potter. I'm pretty sure it is. Set in the same universe. Uh, set before, again, Harry Potter. Uh, and a sequel to the first uh, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them movie. So, this movie begins in a cell uh, as we follow Johnny Depp playing Wald. And uh, him just sitting there with uh, this little creature in tow. Uh, these two people are talking about how dangerous he is. But um, they are getting ready to essentially move him. And with the help of this other individual, he's able to swap places with this other wizard. And the two of them are able to escape together. So, it cuts to our main character, Newt, who uh, essentially wants to gain access to be able to once again travel as he sees fit. Uh, and he's trying to get this stuff from uh, the higher-ups, uh, obviously. Uh, while Wald is up to his gaining uh, allies and doing all that stuff, uh, he eventually gets added in with a woman uh, and other individuals. While that's going on, Newt is having his own adventures, uh, and he's fast traveling along the world, and he meets uh, Dumbledore. From those of you who do not know, Dumbledore, of course, is known in Harry Potter, and, he, and he's young, which is why I indicated this is that this is obviously a prequel. Well, maybe not obviously, but it is. Anyways, I'm gonna call Dumbledore Double D for short. So Double Double D plays uh, off as our sort of info dump, as he tells uh, our main character about. Wald and how uh, magic, uh, you know, is all afoot. And the two of them start traveling along as they're communicating to stay out of, like, sight or whatever. Uh, and in the process, he kind of goes about his job. I guess that's his job to capture creatures uh, in his home. And he calls to his mother and then um, he gets help feeding a kelpie and starts to ride it along in the water but he gets a quick visit from two of the people from the previous movie Jacob and Queenie uh, Jacob having memory issues because of Queenie at, the, at least the first part of the movie uh, so Newt eventually removes this little enhancement and then Jacob is very confused and Queenie gets upset and ends up leaving. So they end up arguing over uh, how hard it is that they can't marry each other because one of them is a human and one of them being Queenie is a, uh, a wizard. But he does end up getting left alone in the rain while Newt is trying to repair his relationship with Tina. Uh, so the two of them get ready to head off to France. Uh, meanwhile, we get these two magical beings. Uh, one of them, I believe his name is like Credence. Um, and this other lady, the snake lady, I'd never think I'd catch her name. If we did, I completely missed it. 
Um, these two under are under circum a circus performance, um, and the woman is turns into a snake, and then the other kid uh, acts as a distraction, and um, the two of them proceed to essentially escape. And Tina, I believe that's her name, uh, heads out and starts to question the ringleader, and then as he's packing up and getting ready to leave. So, she essentially just wants to meet with this Credence boy and figure out what that's all about. So... Uh, they talked to this guy named Connor. I think that was his name. There are a lot of characters in this movie, by the way. So, I'm sorry if I didn't keep track of all of them. Nonetheless, um, they end up, uh, joining, or, uh, uh, Wald. We cut back to him, and he's talking about essentially getting this Credence kid to join their team. And he thinks that this kid can essentially kill Dump, Dump, Double D. That's essentially what he wants. So... Meanwhile, Newt and Jacob are walking and talking, and they're talking about love life and the crushes that they both have. Then they proceed to barter for passage and teleport via bucket. So, uh, Newt does this big spell where he's trying to locate Tina, and he's like smelling along this flower and then traveling with it. Meanwhile, Queenie is traveling underground to search for Tina, so she's also searching for Tina separately. Uh, but while that's going on, we see a Credence and this other lady escape back up, and we immediately know that they're the bad guys, because the music is not very subtle, unfortunately. So anyways, Queenie uh, gets back to Jacob and Newt. They reunite. So she sits down, eventually hearing various voices, uh, and ends up being touched by this other lady. I'm not sure. I think it was the snake lady? I don't know. Um, so the two circus kids, or... They keep saying they're, they keep saying kids or the boy credence, even though he's like a young man. I don't know why, but anyway, they're speaking with this old lady, and she essentially was his uh, was the caretaker of the two of them, or just him. Uh, but the house begins to blow up and implode and explode over and over again. Uh, seeing this one individual essentially try to take both of them out. But they get this bit of protection as well, so they're able to survive whatever this attack is. And the man who did this essentially reports back to Wald. Meanwhile, Jake and Newt watch, uh, are watching something go on. I forget what... It was, exactly, because I didn't write in my notes. So, they see uh, this old dead lady. Uh, meanwhile, uh, they start to ask about Tina from this man that they're with. And the two, they eventually do find Tina. However, a, this guy that has them, uh, I think is again, I think his name is Connor. I don't know. He captures all three of them and he ends up dying or 
quote, dying. He ends up coming back to life. And there, his, Newt's little tree pal unlocks them out. Very Groot. Did remind me of that a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> anyway, uh, this creature called the Clover, I think that's what it, I think it's the name it was given. It goes, it starts to go on this rampage, and Newt stands firm and then does this little wiffle dance with this bell and then is able to get this clover back into the suitcase and the clover is like this huge tiger cat dragon thing it's very colorful and has big googly eyes uh so it ends up back in the suitcase uh, and then his card begins to glow. I'm not what, sure what that indicates, but then they travel to Hogwarts, the actual school. Uh, so it cuts to these this magical law enforcer, uh, who is Newt's brother, proceeding to barge into the school and kicks every all the students out and places. Uh, the teacher under arrest. So the teacher proceeds to warn Theseus, Newt's brother, about what's going on and why he can't essentially do anything. Now, this next part got a, was a little bit confusing when I first saw it because it proceeds to keep staying in the school, but there's no indication of this. But I believe it is a flashback to um, Newt uh, doing the spell and then um, her doing a spell as well, uh, seeing her worst fear. Uh, this young lady was Lita. So it essentially cuts away before we are revealed to what the secret of her uh, fear is, at least fully. We get this like cloth thing that falls, but what comes of that is uh, hidden from us, the audience, until later on in the movie. So, uh, Newt shows off uh, Tina to the little tree thing that he has. Uh, anyway, it cuts back to um, the current day where Lita and the teacher are talking it out. And she's saying like, oh, you'd think I was a disappointment and stuff like that. Uh, then it cuts to Queenie and this other lady. And Wald walks in on the two of them while the other lady walks out. And he, ex he explains that he wants a wizard-free zone. Uh... It was when he said this where I started to think uh, his sort of motivations kind of does remind me of, um, what's his name, uh, Professor X's rival, shoot, I'm completely blanking on the name right now, it's very late and I should have wrote that in my notes but I did not. Uh, So anyways, uh, the teacher remembers this blood pact that he made with, uh, Wald, uh, and that is why he cannot go after Wald. So it, cut, it cuts to, uh, Newt getting kicked around, but he gets helped by the creature and then that the newest one he put in the suitcase and um he they somehow carried the guy that was that captured them with them there's no indication of that unfortunately so it kind of does feel like that little part comes out of nowhere um but apparently he does have this weird parasite which he proceeds newt proceeds to take out and uh, so all that goes down. So Wald sees uh, the young man, Credence, or Credence, or however you pronounce his name, uh, and starts to talk to him and gives him a map 
to this place where the, he plans to have this big meeting. Meanwhile, Jacob, who we have not seen in my, a while, meets another new character called the Alchemist. And the Alchemist goes to this orb and talks to this fortune teller that says that these uh, little things are starting to play out as they, as she foresaw them. Meanwhile, Lita, or Lena, I forget which one it was now, <laughs> and Theseus kiss it out. They have their little romantic moment because they are together. Um, I'm not sure how built up that all was. If it seemed out of nowhere, then I didn't perceive, perceive any other indication uh, anywhere else in the movie that they were together, unfortunately. If there's any... I don't even know if Theseus was in the first movie. I don't remember. Um, but nonetheless, Newt ends up like traveling uh, quicker and... Um, Tina essentially helps them escape, but uh, Jacob is stopped in the process. So uh, Newt and Tina look with this little light and they, um, while they're moving around awkwardly, Newt starts to admit that he has this thing for her, kind of, sort of. But then Lita catches them, and she kind of has a thing for Newt, I think. So she spins them around to see both Newt and Tina. So Lita attacks these two guard cats, and then the two guard cats turn into multiple, like four or five or however many. Uh, so Newt pulls out that creature, that cat creature dragon thing earlier to get an assist to get them outside so Connor the I'm just gonna keep calling him Connor because that's the name I last wrote so I, I'm sorry if that's not his name but whatever I'm just gonna call him Connor because I honestly don't know his name uh, proceeds to stop Le Lita uh, and Newt is trying to flee in the process as well. But he gets them eventually and then they start talking it out. And he starts to explain his past and then the past uh, it gets a little bit weird. Uh, so the kid is also with them. And he's talking about how he was given this weird name, uh, some coerce the strange or something the strange. I forget what his, the title was exactly. Uh, but Lita says before the Connor can kill them is that she ended up killing the person, and anyways as a baby and how her family tree is all weird. This. There's a lot that goes down. Uh, Lita, seeing in a flashback, trading the babies at birth, uh, and proceeding to move it along. So, they start to move into this sort of council type room, uh, where a bunch of wizards are already located. And Jacob is already there with Queenie and he wants her to leave. And Newt and Tina are also there and they know it's a trap ready, but Tina is quickly stopped before she can um, do essentially anything. But Wald enters center stage and he begins his speech. And again, he kind of has that, uh, oh God, it's so name still is um Magneto oh god why how did I forget that name Jesus Christ he does kind of remind me of Magneto uh that sort of um you know humans fear us mutants or in this case wizards 
we need to take them out before they take us out. Very uh, similar story. Uh, Magneto, I do think, out of the two of them, does still have a better backstory, though. Out of the two movies. I'm, I'm just drawing comparisons to Magneto because it's the first like backstory I could think of of like why that sounded so familiar. Anyway, um, so he's uh, prepping them up to get to war and then um, some of the people like start to or like one of them starts to like move in um, and the rest of the zone that is surrounding it clears, that being the centerpiece. And these wizard police, I think they're, they're like, these wizard police end up, like, trying to move in on him, and then he kills those that tries to flee. And Cadence, uh, or Cadence, or whatever his name is, the boy, moves in. Queenie moves in, Newton, um, his brother, god damn it, now I'm, I'm forgetting his name now, I, Theseus, there we go, uh, and his brother, uh, are protecting themselves from this blue flame that is all over the place, uh, Lita steps into the center, but she ends up, like, trying to attack him, and then she gets killed in the process of doing that. Which allows them to get enough time to teleport away. Uh, and the, the alchemist arrives outside while the other wizards start to uh, cast this spell as the blue flame spreads out its wings and turns into a blue dragon trying to escape and spread across Paris. But the spell is keeping it contained within. So they contain the blue flame. Newt picks up this tiny trinket ends up he heading back to Hogwarts and meeting up with the teacher. Uh, so, it cuts to Wald and uh, the boy and the Queenie, I believe, is with them at the time. And he proceeds to, uh, that being Wald, give uh, the boy a wand and tells him that he will have to kill his brother which is Dumbledore, and he reveals that the boy is another Dumbledore. I guess the Dumbledore is a, a family name. I never actually knew that, but I, I, I actually assumed that Dumbledore was the first name, but I guess it's the family name. But anyways, that is how this movie ends. It is a two-hour movie, and boy, oh boy, are there a lot of characters, and there's a lot going on in this movie. Uh, jeez. Uh, I did enjoy it. It just feels like there, it feels like there were almost, like, two movies happening almost a little bit here. Uh, it feels like it was trying to carry out, uh, with the, the, with the Fantastic Beast and where to find them left off, while also simultaneously telling the story of how, how Grindelwald, or just how, as I was referring to him as Wald, was trying to raise up this wizard army, including this Credence boy who ended up being a Dumbledore, to get it, to, to get him to realize his full potential and take out the main Dumbledore, uh, in the process, um, there were definitely a few, a lot of things I missed in my notes, like, um, why Dumbledore himself wouldn't go after Wald, um, he ended up, I think he was the teacher, wasn't, and I get, I kind of got those two confused, I thought those are two separate characters, because it's how I wrote it in my notes, uh, but anyways, Dumbledore, um, and Wald had a, as they, as Dumbledore himself put it, a special relationship. And, um, I did watch one other review who, who, uh, you know, mention of like, oh, you know, you could have just said Dumbledore was gay because of, like, how the Harry Potter author essentially confirmed that and how they did not do that they they essentially kept it sort of like the best way vague as possible uh, 
but sort of still kind of making it semi-obvious. Um, I don't know. It, I, I think it's kind of dumb as well. Um, and for all what all for what for all that's worth, I think there's a, a little bit missing from that story. It feels like it feels like from Wald's perspective, there was a lot to be desired in that relationship question mark. Um, so again, we just see a blood pact, but we're not really sure why. Like. There's not enough setup to why they set up that blood pact in the first place, I feel like. Um, that is the part I feel like is missing from this movie. I don't know if any other where part of this movie that I just might have missed out on that would indicate that. Um, but it does obviously set up for a next installment, obviously, with uh, the two Dumbledores going after one another and then Wald doing his stuff uh, with any of the other wizards that he picked up along the way. It seemed like he had more on his side at the end. Uh, I did enjoy it and again it did feel like there were almost two movies kind of simultaneously being told within one movie and it kind of had to be two hours because of that. Uh, so, I do think with, like, some of the backstory that I do think that they could have made a bit more clearer that those are either flashbacks or flesh out the flashbacks in general as well. I think if they did those two things, I think I would have enjoyed this movie more. Just to get a little bit more insight into the characters that we are seeing on the screen. because uh, there are quite a lot of them. Uh... And, you know, if the movie is named after Mr. Wald here, I think there, you know, I think him, out of all the characters, should have some sort of backstory that's a bit more of the bulk of the movie, I almost feel like. Um, so, I don't know. I would give this movie a 6 out of 10. I do think that there's a few things missing here that to make it quite a 7 out of 10, but I still enjoyed it enough. So again, 6 out of 10. Uh, the Crimes of Grindelwald. And that is my review of it. And if you enjoyed this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also make sure to check out that link in the description. I to visit my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. Until next time, everyone. Bye!